subject. Make sure this is properly in position. There we go. Okay. First of all, like I said in the past clinics, thank you for taking the time to come out today and, and a little bit about what I do in my program. My name is Dan Grunewald. I'm right behind this particular bleacher. Uh, I come from Jefferson, Wisconsin. A little bit about my background. We come from the we come from the horse show world, a little bit more from the Western Pleasure. And we do some, we train a little bit of the reining horses. And we have some hunt seat horses, we have some showmanship horses, a little bit of everything, I guess. Uh, we judge the ranch horse, we judge the reining horse, we judge the cutting horse. Gotta have, we try to have a diversity. Uh, we were actually asked to judge the 2010 uh, Ranch Horse World Show this year. That was kind of an honor, something pretty cool. Uh, this topic, though, we're going to talk about advancing horsemanship. I saved this for my last topic because I didn't think it was important to put it the first one. We're doing this one last, and I asked TJ and Susie to help me. TJ is going to go ahead and show you a little bit about how we get the horses to kind of do the maneuvers to get you to the winner's circle. Okay, to do a little bit more of the finesse. Alright? TJ's done over there. We'll go ahead and show you, but this is what we're going to get you guys accustomed to and to show the brokenness of the horse. If you watch the horse that I'm on, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of him, pretty proud of him. He actually last night, I wasn't there to accept the awards, but the owner is pretty proud. He ended up winning the year end in Wisconsin for the trail and the West Pleasure and the Discipline Rail. He was leading the state, or sorry, leading the country in the Buckskin Association and the Western Pleasure. We couldn't keep it up because the same weekend we had somebody running pretty close to us in the point. We were asked to come to the World Equestrian Games. That was in Lexington, Kentucky. So we, we didn't make it to have the horse end up winning that year end, but he's a neat, neat horse. And if any questions that you have, Definitely, don't be afraid to ask a question. Okay, TJ's back. All right. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and show you some of the stuff. And TJ, how about I just work on a little bit of the, uh, like a leaching? Okay. Show me or tell the folks what we're doing as far as how I'm positioning my horse. And I'll come and uh, interact with you as well. Put that microphone just so everybody can hear you. Okay, okay Mike. Oh, uh, can you hear that? Can you hear me? Okay. Now, lead changes, we don't work our horses in circles a lot. Because circles will teach your horse to drop his shoulder. Straight lines are better. So we want that straight line from the shoulder all the way back to our horse. Now that horse is on the left lead, right lead, sorry. He's going around there, nice and soft. Horse is coming forward. You notice how Dan stays on a straight line. Straight line is very important. Make sure the straight lines are very, very critical. In my program and TJ, we do not work a lot. Well, maybe I'm kind of stepping out of bounds here, but I don't, I don't use a lot of round pins in my program. The reason why I don't use a lot of round pins. It's because the horse will have a tendency to drop their shoulder. Yeah, lean in. Right, they lean in. And remember, a lot of the horse shows straight rails or straight pattern work. So I work, and I think TJ does a lot in hay fields, just mm -hmm. wide open areas. A lot of straight lines. Straight lines. Well, watch how this is best for folks like you uh, coming at you is nice and straight. Okay? I'll try to come right toward the bleachers. We'll talk about straight. That is the most crucial thing about a lead chain. They have to be balanced. That's so deep in here, we apologize. He's just coming on a straight line. Oh, he's pretty straight right there, loping. That tells me his shoulders are up, he's not leaning one way, his head ain't cocked a different way. Exactly. You know, it's no different than us. If we're looking one way and we ask that horse or you know, ourselves to go a certain direction, 
It's going to be difficult. So, balance, right? Yeah. I the only thing is you notice when Dan picked his horse up and got that horse into a chain lead, he didn't twist his horse in half. <laughs> right. And, and they on a straight line to pick his lead up. Straight line. Dan, yeah, show them how they used to do it. Okay. Now these cones, we'll talk about the cones in a bit, but we all used to, we all used to make the horses look like this. Go, go, hurry! <laughs> and the horse is bent to the outside of the circle. Now I'm asking, he ain't going, is he? He ain't, he ain't going. He says, hey, you're screwing me up. Why is that? Why is it? Anybody know why he can't get into that lead? Stop that. Yeah, he's not picking up his shoulder. Right. So like TJ said, we have to have balance. This is why I use this bit. Look at how I picked this side up, and that shank didn't move on the other side, did it? It's just working on this side of the body. So TJ, let's go ahead and we'll show him what we need to do correctly, okay? Right. Susie, when you get a chance, if your horse feels comfortable, try it around, come right in front, and pick up that right inside rein, and we'll ask for a horse to lope off. Oh, very nice. Nicely done. See that horse just stay on a straight line and pick that lead up? Because they're picking up that shoulder. Straight line. Sure. Right line. You want this lead? You want that lead? Right okay. lead. Right rein. Right lead. There you go. Oop. That's all it is. It's not that bad, but did you see how I picked that shoulder up from that bit? Okay. Why that worked so good, he picked the shoulder up.